Simon Rattle, the principal conductor for the Berlin Philharmonic, says that music is our birthright. He believes that every child deserves to have music education from the moment that they enter schooling. It may be no surprise to you that a professional musician would believe that music is important, but it may be a surprise that 95% of Americans surveyed believe that music education is part of a well-rounded education. 93% believe that music education should be offered in all of our schools. And four out of five Americans believe that music should be mandated for all students. The fact that the majority of Americans believe that music is important in our lives doesn't translate into action. For instance, the majority of Americans believe that climate change is real, but we've yet to do anything substantially about it. In the same way, this support for music education tends to evaporate in hard financial times. My earliest memories are of sitting in front of our family stereo, listening to Rachmaninoff, Prokofiev, Tchaikovsky. Technically, I wasn't supposed to operate the stereo system. At three years old, though, I figured out how to lift that plastic tone arm and gently set it on the turntable while adjusting the volume control so that I wouldn't disturb anybody in the house. So I had free reign. I was fascinated and captivated by the technicolor soundscape that was coming from the speakers. I could see the story as it evolved. I could place myself in the music. I became the boy of the music. This was the time in my life where the seed was planted that would eventually grow into my decision to be a music educator. I've taught the majority of my career in Naperville, Illinois, just outside of Chicago. This is the place you want to be if you're a music educator. Parents want the best for their children, and music is part of that formula. We've been able to create one of the most comprehensive and nationally re renowned music programs in the country. Six years ago, the economy was taking such a bad turn that all of us had to do more with less in order to keep every program intact so that we could weather the financial storm. We tried to keep what's best for kids in the center of everything we did, but what happens when you have scarcity of funds? Programs begin to squeeze out what's best for kids and begin to advocate for what's best for them. And the program nationally that tends to be slighted in any financial crisis is the music program. In our district, we were no exception. Our school board decided to cut $1 million from our music program, which represented 19 staff members out of 90. Significant cut in our ability to facilitate music instruction. Music leaders in our district, myself included, were caught flat-footed. We thought that our community valued the arts and that a cut targeted on us during this time was incomprehensible. Yes, our community thinks that music is important, but it was clear to us then that they did not believe that music was essential. We made it our task to convince our community that music is essential. We formed a grassroots organization called Art Speaks. Art Speaks brought the message that the music provides the competitive edge for our students and that the arts are an essential component of a comprehensive education. The way that we facilitated this information was to host events where we featured speakers who had careers outside of the arts but could speak to how the arts in their lives had given them the skills that they needed in order to stand out in their fields and be successful. We borrowed from our school board their priorities for 21st century skills, creativity, collaboration, 
communication, critical thinking. The four C's, we pointed to those skills as the ones that we could hone in the arts. We found a significant amount of evidence of how music, in particular, could really give kids an advantage academically. We looked to our friends at Northwestern University and the neuroscience lab led by Nina Krauss and the brain research that they were doing of the effects that music has on the activity in the brain. And what Nina Krauss and her associates found out is there was a direct correlation between language skills in children and their exposure to music. One of the most compelling stories that she came up with through her uh, research was that students who were significantly behind in language skills, comprehension of spoken word and reading, once they had gone through two years of instrumental training or more, that they would see significant gains in their comprehension and their test scores would go up. Turnaround Arts is a government program that's geared towards the lowest performing schools in the country, the bottom 5%. They go into these communities and they teach the instructors there how to infuse the arts into the curriculum to make all subjects more engaging and more authentic for the learning of children. And they have found significant gains in the student's ability to perform on standardized tests. We tell our students that their exposure to music all the way through high school is an advantage for them when they apply for college. One, statistically, we know that they will do better than their peers on college entrance exams. And two, we know anecdotally from our friends in the university system that their resumes and their essays will reflect their experience in the arts in a positive way. So we invited the Assistant Dean of Admissions from Northwestern University and the University of Illinois to our campus to speak about that advantage. And they pointed out that it's much more attractive to them to have a student that doesn't necessarily have a perfect grade report and a perfect ACT score, as it does to have a student who's active in their community, is engaged in the arts, and has not necessarily succeeded at everything that they've done. They found that people in the arts, especially in music, are much more resilient and much more acceptance of failure on the way to success. Our community responded to all of these events in a very positive way. Our program now is succeeding. It's doing very well. And I, I can't be more excited about the opportunities for the students in my home school district. Art Speaks, during this time of calm and the crisis having passed, is starting to examine what role we've played in the idea that testing is the best way to get at success in children. We held up music, in particular, as the vehicle for improving test scores, and we're feeling a little sheepish about it. We think we need to go into a little bit harder examination of what we do to kids. I think the idea that the more strenuous, arduous, and stressful a subject is means that it is more important than other subjects. We encourage our kids to take AP tests when they're not ready. We encourage tests to engage in material they're not ready for. And they become, as you can imagine, very stressed. We have parents in our school district who are sending their third graders to a STEM school for the express purpose of turning them into engineers. Let's be frank, there is not a third grader alive that needs a career dangled in front of them to be motivated to learn. They're naturally curious, they're inquisitive. They wanna know about themselves, they wanna know about their environment. They wanna know how to interact with others. They wanna know how to contribute. Music is a vehicle for that and it's, exciting as somebody who facilitates a special needs drumming circle to see students who are nonverbal get out of their academic setting where they don't have any way to communicate 
with their peers or their teachers and come into a setting where new avenues of communication are opened. You can see the joy on their faces every time that we have a session. You can guess that in the week of a child who has special needs, that this drumming circle is the thing they look forward to most. Every time a child engages with music, they're on a journey of improvement. They have many failures on the road to great success. And every time that they are able to play or sing together, they experience great joy because of the journey that it took to get there. Their success is measured on their contribution and on their authentic involvement in the art form. When I take students all over the world, there is not a language barrier that can't be crossed by music. I also notice that any social systems that arise in a high school setting tend to disappear when you're on the road with a bunch of teenage musicians. They all become best friends for life. My wife experienced firsthand the miraculous role of music and memory. Twelve years ago, she began volunteering for a group called In-Home Senior Respite. As the name implies, her job was to provide companionship, companionship for people who were experiencing great cognitive difficulty. And she would come in and take periods of time so that the caregiver could get respite from their 24-7 caregiving duties. Al was her first companion. Al was in the latter stages of Alzheimer's, and he could not be left alone for two very important reasons. One, he couldn't communicate what he needed verbally, so you had to see what he was doing and respond to that. And two, he could get lost in any other room than his living room, and if he went outside, he'd be lost forever. So this was a person who really required care. She decided music would be great for them to pass the time, and she found out that Al liked jazz. So she brought a boom box, remember those? Set it on the table and brought a stack of big band CDs. The moment that String of Pearls started up, Al started to scat sing. And then, she put on Satin Doll, and then she put on Take the A Train. And every time he scat sing, sang, but what was interesting about it was she noticed that he was actually singing where it was pleasant and sounded good and was exactly right. So she said to Al, you are really good at this. And he looked at her and he said, well, I should be. I played jazz. I used to play with my friends Jack and Sherm every weekend in the city. Imagine how surprised Al's wife was when she came home to find out that Al had a moment of clarity. Her next companion was Chuck. Chuck had the same, kind of, same kind of cognitive impairment as Al. And she found out he liked Hank Williams. So same scenario. She goes to the library, checks out the entire anthology of Hank Williams tunes. Brings it, starts playing. From the moment he heard the first strains of Hey Good Look and he was off and running. And not like Al where he was scat singing, he was singing the lyrics. Now this is a gentleman who can't tell you what he wants for breakfast. He can't tell you if he needs a drink of water. But by God, he knows all the lyrics to Hank Williams tunes. So she was impressed. And as they were singing, because she had the lyrics, she could cheat. <laughs> she said, how do you know all the lyrics, Chuck? He said, well, I used to get in my Chevy, roll down all the windows in the summer, and go down Route 66 with the radio blaring, and this is what I'd sing along to. So they finished out their session, and he turned to her and he said, I'll make a hillbilly out of you yet. Well, we thought those were great stories for our family, and we really honor Lynn for the work that she does with people in need and the fact that we could, we could have these stories as part of our, our family history. But we thought they were very unusual stories. Well, all you have to do is go on YouTube and type in Henry responds to music, and you'll get a short video clip 
of Henry doing exactly that. And it'll give you some insight into what my wife experienced with Al and Chuck. The movie Alive Inside chronicles the work of Dan Cohen, a social worker, who discovered that every one of the residents, if you found out what their playlist was, you could bring them up and into who they were. It could bring them back to themselves. Brain research shows that where musical memory is stored, it's the last place to be affected by dementia. I think of all the reasons that we've selected to say that music is important in our lives and that we need to have it in our schools probably is trumped by the fact that our body considers musical memory so precious that it's the last thing that it'll allow to go. Like Simon Rattle, I've been afforded a free public education with music at every level. I've created a playlist that's exhaustive and comprehensive, and someday that playlist may be the only thing that connects me to who I am. Think about what's on your playlist. Think about what music could bring you up and out and back to who you are. Music is our birthright. Every child deserves music from the moment they begin schooling. They need rich musical experiences because they are building the foundation of their playlist of their lifetime. Thank you. <laughs>